And so, Congressman, I wanted to first ask you for your comment on uh, the U.S. Department of Labor saying that CW1s in the CNMI are not eligible for pandemic unemployment assistance and for FPUC. Uh, yeah, thank you uh, for that question, Tomas. Um, look, um, when we did the CARES Act, uh, there are criteria for receiving of benefits um, based on the criteria again set forth in the CARES Act. Um, unfortunately, because um, we don't have unemployment compensation here, I'm fully aware of this, um, the US Department of Labor actually went and, and looked to FEMA originally about how they work on disaster uh, loans, I mean disaster on compensation. And then they went to a, a, a 1996 uh, law, the uh, Public Responsibility and Work Opportunity Reconciliation Act, and they used this law which has a very narrow definition of eligibility, and they use this law to uh, establish eligibility for non-U.S. citizens and non-U.S. permanent residents here in the Marianas. Um, that, uh, even with Chairman Neal, who actually is responsible for writing this part of the law, that um, criteria was never, it was never congressional intention to use a separate criteria from that established in the CARES Act. I mean, how could you do this when even asylees, uh, for example, uh, those under temporary protected status, um, you know, uh, those under parole are eligible for, for POA and FPUC, and those who are here working uh, when it's very clear the law saying um, that um, uh, very clearly says that one of the criteria was, was lawfully present for purposes of performing such services, the work, um, and um, yeah, that's one of the criteria. And for that, um, include, that includes uh, our CW ones. And so, yesterday at the press conference, I asked Governor Torres because he stated that there's no local funds to support CW workers. We have about you know ten thousand, thirteen thousand of them, and I asked where do CW workers turn to, and Governor Torres said, "Turn to U.S. Congress." As our congressman, what can be done to provide some relief through Congress for our CW workers? Right. Well, Tomas, again, as I said earlier, we've done uh, what we think, I mean, and I'm not the only one there, you know, Chairman Neal, uh, Senator Wyden uh, of the finance, Senate Finance Committee, we've done that. But at the same time, we're looking at uh, providing uh, more clarification language, if possible, on, on the next bill, which is negotiated by leadership. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, again, uh, if only, you know, if the governor had um, used the criteria set forth in the CARES Act and argued that before just outright saying, um, you know, U.S. Department of Labor said, you know, uh, the East is West to the end, just saying, okay, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, that's unfortunate. You, you need to argue sometimes with, with uh, federal agencies, uh, but that's what happens. So we are looking at other ways to do this, um, and, uh, but we're not there yet. All right, and I wanted to follow up on something we've spoken about before in person on SIPAN about the way, the, the handling of the PUA program with the Department of Labor. Um, you know, we've had, I, I, I believe 15 million so far dispersed. Um, do, are, do you continue to see challenges at the local CNMI Department of Labor? Well, you know, the good news is, um, you know, $50.1 million uh, have been paid out as of July 30. That's, that's good news. Uh, and people are finally getting checks, finally. The bad news is $50 million is, is only a beginning, and there could be as much as $250 million more that Congress appropriated and people are waiting for. Um, I wish I could give you more information, how many people have filed for assistance, how many have gotten help, uh, how many are still waiting, but the Commonwealth has not reported to the U.S. Department of Labor this information as they are required to do. And, but again, at least, and that's what the U.S. Department of Labor told me last week, and so um, I know it is a relief uh, for those who have got the paid. I wish the Commonwealth had acted sooner, uh, faster, and more efficiently. Uh, it is not easy to be out of work for four months with no income. Um, 
and that this program, the uh, FPUC, um, uh, only goes until the end of July. Um, and the House have passed the HEROES Act, uh, which extends this program to January of 2021. The administration and Republican Senate will not agree. So right now there are negotiations between the House and the White House. Actually, the Senate has for somehow just delegated to the White House their legislative respons responsibility. And at the same time, our president has issued an, ex uh, an executive order um, extending a $400 a week uh, unemployment compensation based on FEMA money. Uh, some have questioned the uh, legitimacy, the le how if this was legal, but number one, but number two, the problem has, the issue has problems in itself, in and in itself. One, this is, the president is not, it's actually creating a whole new program, uh, compensation program, an entirely new program. And number two, requiring that states meet 25% uh, on local um, uh, in matching uh, funds and the Commonwealth doesn't have that. Number three, um, many states who have unemployment compensation programs established by law are, are finding it that it's going to be difficult to put this program parallel with their own state compensation uh, law. When for us in the Northern Marianas, we don't have a compensation, uh, unemployment compensation law. And so how do we parallel this new program that the president has set forth? And uh, again, you know, the Commonwealth doesn't have the millions that we're gonna need to match this. So the governor will have to uh, submit his intention to participate, but uh, where, are we gonna, where are we gonna get the match?